Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the Faber Castell Australia live stream. My name is Liz Tu and I'm from Letter Me. I'm a calligrapher, an artist. Today we're going to be recreating Live Life in Full Bloom. We're going to be celebrating spring coming up and colour for life. So I'll be sharing my tips and tricks today um, with watercolour lettering, with uh, modern calligraphy, brush and watercolour lettering, what we're using today. Um, today we're going to be using the Gold Faber Aqua Jewel Markers. Um, we don't have to use all the colours, it's got quite a beautiful rainbow mix here. Um, whatever colours that you're happy with to um, paint your flowers, they'll be awesome. Um, we've also got, if you've um, got any Aubrey Dura watercolour markers, you can use that. We're quite flexible with what type of watercolour markers you're using today. Um, we'll be using the Pit Artist um, markers today. You can either use the dual brush here, where we've got one side is the brush pen and the other side is a fine line. Or if you're more comfortable with the Pit Artist brushes, it's a bit smaller, you can use that as well. Um, for the watercolour, I'm going to be using the filbert, the pointed filbert brush. I like it because it's got a, a sharp tip and it's quite a round um, body. If you've got a round brush, that works fine as well. Of course, we're going to need some water and some watercolour paper, and then we're good to go. We've also got some downloadables that are free from the Colour for Life website. So there's two pages. Um, these are really good for your calligraphy. If you're happy to follow along, you can use these today as well. Now, Colour for Life is a drawing competition. It brings together artists to inspire um, the, the community. Um, we can create something together. Um, when you upload it and you, you create it with Faber-Castell products, um, create something that inspires you, what you think um, relates to you in regards to Colour for Life. Uh, make sure you take a photo of it, snap it, um, upload it, hashtag Colour for Life and um, tag Faber-Castell Australia and you'll be in the competition to win um, one of the amazing prizes. There's up to, I think it's $4,000 worth of incredible prizes to be won. I'm going to show you today um, with the gold Faber markers and the best way to hold them, um, I like to hold it about a third of the way up and if you have a look where the writing starts, but with the markers I like to hold it about a third of the way up because I put less pressure on the tip. Um, modern calligraphy, we're doing a lot of work with pressure, so downstrokes we add pressure. So today what we're going to be doing are some basic strokes. So if you have a look, my downstrokes is where I put most of the pressure. I'm not going to ch is the pressure of my pen. So if I'm holding my pen the same angle, the same height, I can actually achieve oops, thin upstrokes. And this is just by using less pressure, changing the angle, it's just pushing down and lifting up. We generally call the upstrokes hairline strokes because you're trying to make it as thin as possible. But having such a beautiful thick tip like this, we generally don't achieve hairline strokes. So being able to achieve a, um, a different stroke, a different thickness, is what we're trying to aim. So if you have a look at my, um, my paper here, I've got a very thick downstroke and a thin upstroke. And that's what we want to achieve. Okay, so... Now with our time um, that we've got today, I'm not gonna teach you all the letters of the alphabet, but what we do want to achieve is live life in full bloom. So we're going to do an L, an I, a V, an E, uh, full bloom. I'm going to work with the letters of the alphabet. Um, so we're going to start with the letter B. Before I do that, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about um, the underturns and overturns. Now these aren't letters as such, but these are the basic strokes that is very useful for when you're learning calligraphy. So I'm gonna get a new page. So the underturn is like a letter U. We don't take the pen off the paper. We go thick down, thin up, 
and our turning point is at about six o'clock. So if we think about the clock, six o'clock's at the bottom. So if we go thick down, thin up, thick down, thin up, without taking your pen off the paper. I'm gonna draw a nice and big one just to show you. And your turning point is about that, okay? So thick down, thin up, thick down, thin up. This is an over, thick down, thin up, thick down, thin up, thick down, thin up. Now we're going to get into the letters. So this is the fun part. We're going to start with the letter B. Stroke here has a nice subtle curve to it. If you have a look, it's not completely straight. And that's what we're going to try and achieve. It's not completely straight. It's got a subtle curve. And it makes your words look more friendlier, more loose, more bouncy. And then your next stroke, what I always tell uh, my students is we break up letters where we can into separate chunks. We take our pen off the paper and it gives our hand a break. It gives our pen a break. So our pen flexes when we put a lot of pressure down. From the bottom, we go around, thick stroke up, a uh, thick stroke down, sorry, and then finish it off. I'm going to put it together for you. So we've got that stroke here. Starting from the bottom, we're going to go up, around, I'll show you once more. We've got the beautiful stem. Taking our pen off to give our hand a break, the pen a break, and also our brain a break. And then we go back to the stem, loop around and finish off. You can then go on to doing the letter H. You can do the letter L. You can do the letter K. There's lots of letters you can do once you've got that curve. All right, so the next letter we have is the letter E. I'm gonna choose a different color because I can. There's so many colors here. Um, how do you think this will come up on the camera, Matt? Yeah, good. Yep. Good? Okay. So the letter E is quite a simple letter. We think of it like a spiral. It's more about being able to manage your thick and thins. So we're gonna go thin across, thick down. Thin across, thick down. Thin across, thick down. Think of a spiral, so thin across, thick down. Okay, so that's your second letter. I'm gonna try and whiz through these letters because I do want, I know we've got an hour and I do want to, to focus on our watercolor flowers after this. Okay, so our next color, I'm gonna use pink. So the F is a peculiar letter. A lot of people ask me about the letter F because it doesn't look like the modern calligraphy F, I should say. It doesn't look like the F that we learned in primary school. This letter F, we've got a big head and a little body. And we try and do it in one stroke, okay? So we've got a big head and a little body. So if this is your head, this is your body, okay? It doesn't have to be a particular ratio. It doesn't have to be, you know, three to one or whatever. As long as you've got the big head, and then you've got the little body. Now the little body part, so it's a teardrop shape. What we don't want to see is that you're gonna go sideways because then it's going to look round. And we don't really wanna go down like that. And we're going to do the letter I. And this is when I always talk about making sure all your strokes are conscious. You're not writing the letter I because you've written the letter I over a million times in your life. You're drawing something consciously that you've never drawn before. Thick down and we're going to go thin up. Thick down, thin up. Thick down, thin up. Now when you're doing the dot for your letter I, we're actually going to push down the same as you would with a downstroke. Okay, so We've got the, we've done the letter B, the letter F, I, and now the letter L, okay? So again, the letter L will be quite simple now because we've done the letter B, we're not going to flick it. We're going to draw it consciously, okay? So we're gonna go up, around, down and up, up, around, down and up, 
So, Liz, we've got Gwen, um, Hi, Gwen, Gwen here, and Gwen wants to know what's the best paper to practice on. Well, I like to um, practice just on copy paper. It's nice and affordable. I just pull it out of my printer, and so that's nice and easy. So, just to recap very quickly, we've just um, done our thick downstrokes, our thin upstrokes. We've done our underturns, our overturns. We've done the letter B, E, F, I, and L. Now to one of my most favourite letters of the alphabet is the letter M. I love the letter M because it's got bounce within itself. It's nice and vibrant, bouncy, um, and it's also the start of my daughter's name, so even more to love. Okay, so the next letter is the letter M, and as I mentioned before, modern calligraphy, we, we like to see that it's bouncy, it's vibrant, it's happy, and the letter M is that because there's so many different ways you can write the letter M. I'm gonna show you the most simplest way to start with, okay? So the letter M, if we can have the camera over, yeah. We give it a little bit of a bend. We're giving it a slight curve to make it more warm, friendly, welcoming. Okay, so we've got the nice curve there. Now we're going to do some overturns. We're not going to do the overturn from the middle of the M like you would traditionally do it. In modern calligraphy, we like to give ourselves space and room to move. And so we're going to start the letter, the next part of the letter, the overturn, from the bottom of the first stroke. So if we do something like this, and then the next part, again, a conscious stroke so we're not flicking the tail. Putting it all together, I would have the nice curve, then we have the first overturn, the second overturn, and going back up again. If we want to jazz it up a little bit, we can um, make it more fun and bouncy. We have the first stroke down, we have a smaller overturn, we can have a large overturn. Again, if we wanted to play it up a bit more, something like that. So it depends on what type of piece you're doing, what type of mood, but um, generally with the lead M, I love it because you can make it as fun as you'd like it to be. So for the purpose of today, I'm just going to show you another simple letter M. First overturn, second overturn. And Matt, am I turning my paper too much? All good? Okay. Now we've got the letter M. Um, so th that leads you to the letter N, and that's very similar. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the letter N. It's um, pretty much the same as the M, but with one overturn. So just I'll show you in a different colour. How about that? I'm going to show you with the blue. So again, we've got that nice subtle curve in your downstroke. And then after that, just the one overturn, okay? and then bring it back up again. You're probably wondering why we have worksheets and I haven't been using them. Um, the worksheets are, are very good for you to trace your letters on. So if you were using a finer tip, like the Pit Artist brush, where it's got a smaller tip, you could use it with the worksheet, you can trace it. Um, after this workshop, you can um, download the, the worksheets and have a go at home as well. Okay, so that leads me to my next letter. And my next letter is the letter O. And I love the lowercase O because it doesn't have any closed ends. You don't have to worry about joining your lines together so it's a perfect round circle. Um, we're simply doing a thick downstroke. So we're doing basically an underturn, but looping it all the way around, okay? So similar to what we were doing before, we've got the thick, downstroke and then we're looping it around. Thick downstroke, loop it around. We don't have to worry too much about making sure that it joins up nicely. Thick down and around. So that's the letter O. Okay, the letter U, should all be experts at letter U now because of all the underturns that we've been doing. Um, so the letter U, is basically just an underturn, you stop it there, okay? And then you've got, similar to the letter I, you've got your stem coming down and you're going back up. What you want to achieve, or what you want to do, is have your pen on the outside of where you left off. 
so that you're not actually crossing over where you've gone, you're not actually passing over what you've um, done already, so that it has that nice triangle there. You don't want to do this because it closes off your letter. You want modern calligraphy to be flowy, bouncy and vibrant, okay? So that would be more of a conservative U for me. I would like to do mine with my pen on the outside so that you've got that nice triangle there. And then the last letter that we're going to learn today is the letter V. Okay, the letter V is very simple. Um, similar to what we did with the letter U, it's basically an underturn that is more of an angle. Like that. Followed by a little tail. Okay, so similar to the U with a little tail. And there we have it. Okay, so when we put letters together, um, what I always talk about is in calligraphy, I'm always telling people, remember to take your pen off after every stroke so that you can refresh your pen, refresh your brain and refresh your hand. But when you're actually writing it, you want to give the, the illusion that your pen has never left the table um, or left the paper. You want to give the illusion that you've written it all in one go. So to be able to do that, you need to think whilst doing your current letter, what your next letter is going to be. So if your current letter is, um, I'll give you a good example, a different colour so we can see, B, okay? Your next letter is the letter E. Your B has this shape. Okay, because it extends where your next letter is going to be. If your word is banana, okay, so you've got the letter B, and your next letter is the letter A, it actually changes the shape of the letter B because your, your B goes all the way up there so that your A can start there. I might show you if you have trouble seeing. Your B, the shape goes down there, whereas the B change the shape when you're joining to the letter A, okay? So you need to give some thought of about what your next letter is going to be. So in this case of live life in full bloom, you know that you've got your L and again, the capital L has got a nice slight curve in it to make it more friendly and um, more gentle. Then you've got the I. So the letter I goes all the way up to where your V is going to start, okay? So your usual I, you would be writing it like this, wouldn't you? Now, because I'm stringing words together, I, I'm gonna bring my I all the way up so that when my V starts, it goes there, okay? And now the next part of the word, with this V, you can see that I've done a little flick across. I know that my my E is going to start here, so my V all the way down so that I can continue with my letter E, okay? So that's basically how we would do um, modern calligraphy, stringing letters, individual letters, making them look like a full word um, and making them join like we've never taken the pen off the paper, even though we secretly have. Okay, so we're going to move on and we're going to go to module number two. But before we do that, I might go over to um, Sarah and Matt to see if anyone's got any questions for us. Um, not as of yet. Okay, that's good. Yep, Hopefully seems, that means that we'll... Yeah, everyone clear. seems like they're enjoying, so... Oh, that's, that's good. Fine. That's wonderful. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing, we're going to need some watercolour paper. And I get um, asked all the time which side of the watercolour paper to use. Um, and my general answer would be the rough side. And then people would say, but there's two rough sides, a rough side and a very rough side. So we want to use a very rough side because it holds the most water. If you can't really feel the difference, then a rough side is a good side. Okay, um, what you also need is a paintbrush and obviously some water. 
and some watercolour markers. I'm just going to show you some strokes to start off with. Um, what I like to do is I do some water um, colour swatching. So let's find some colours that I might want to use with my flowers. Um, you don't have to use the same colours as what I'm using, but so I've got here a middle purple pink, which is 125. You don't have to use that colour if you don't want to. I have here a light purple pink, which is 128. I wonder if it helps if I write down the numbers here for you. So um, I've, done, I've chosen two colours at the moment, 125, 128. You don't have to use the same colours as me if you don't want to. Um, but for your own reference, this colour here is the Brilliant Red, which is 122. And I might try this Cadmium Yellow, which is 107. The reason why I talk about the colour names and also the numbers is because Faber-Castell has a colour coding system which is quite unique that I love. And I love using mixed media. So I love using um, pens and markers from different ranges and knowing that I could match it with another pen um, of, this, of a different range but the same colour. So by knowing um, what the name of the colour is or the number, I can match my, um, my medium and the colours. Now all I'm doing now is just dipping my paintbrush in water and I'm just going to colour swatch and it's a good way to see what the colours look like once they're wet and also how your brush reacts to the colours. I'm going to start to mix the colours together. And if anyone missed it before, what I'm using is the Gold Faber Aqua Jewel Markers. If I was to do something similar with the Aubrey Dura Markers, it looks very similar. It's actually got a, um, a thicker nib here. And I know no one's actually asked, but I'll answer that myself, <laughs> okay. Um, the difference between the Gold Faber and the Aubrey Dura watercolour markers, because they're both watercolour markers, is that, I'll put on this side though so I don't confuse you. So these are the Gold Faber Aqua Jewel markers. And um, these are the Aubrey Dura markers. The Gold Fabers are actually dye-based. Um, whereas the watercolour, um, the watercolour inks in the Aubrey Dura markers, these actually um, light fast. So I could paint something and have it in the window for the next 50 years and be confident that my colours aren't going to fade. So um, these are very, very high quality. If you have a look at the difference, they're both, um, they're both water soluble. Um, Matt, are we having a look over the, yeah. onto the paper? Yeah. So um, I love them both. They both do um, very similar things. I find that for me, the colour breaks up much more easier with the um, Aubrey Jura watercolour markers as opposed to the Gold Faber Aqua Jewel markers. Um, but both, they're both excellent for our purposes um, today and we're drawing flowers. So let's get into the flowers. I'm going to be using the Aquafaber uh, markers just to show you. I really like that colour scheme. You don't have to go with that colour scheme if you don't want to. But again, I've used 125, 128, 122 and 107. 
Okay, so we're going to start by doing a curve. And similar to what we did with the lettering, I'm going to push down on one side so I can get um, the most out of the pigment. And I'm going to draw a curve like that. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect curve, it doesn't have to be a perfect petal because in nature we have beautifully imperfect um, petals and flowers so it doesn't have to be anatomically correct and I'll keep harping on about that because I, I really do believe in it. Um, so we've got our brush, we're going to kind of fan it out and do a sweeping motion. Fan it out, a sweeping motion. And that's basically what we do with watercolour flowers. Um, these are very highly pigmented markers. And so one stroke goes a very, very long way. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we, when we use two different curves. And I'm going to do opposing curves. And don't be afraid um, to let the inks run into each other. I love that look when it all blends in really nicely. And again, I'm going to let it fan out. Push down. And that's the basic principle. I also like to paint with nothing on my brush, so just clear water. And then I'll pick up some pigment from there, dab it there. And I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen, but it's very, very subtle. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay. So let's go build up more petals to form a flower. Again, I'm going to use the rougher side of the watercolour paper. Okay, so. We're going to form somewhat a, a helix or a spiral shape. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect spiral and I don't want it to be a perfect spiral. It's not going to dictate exactly how the flower is going to look. It gives us a guide of where the petals are going to happen and it doesn't have to be perfect. I think you're sick of me saying that now. <laughs> so if you have a look at that, it's definitely not a perfect helix or spiral, but you're forming somewhat of a shape of a flower. And I like to use a clean, wet brush, starting from the middle again, and we're going to fan out the same way as we did with the single um, petals. So Liz, Nanette would like to know, does the colour bleed if you add too much water? Yes, it does. It also depends on the type of paper that you use. So I'm using this paper that is, um, this is Archer's watercolour paper. It's quite absorbent, so it doesn't bleed too much, um, but it depends on the type of paper you use. Some paper will, will absorb a lot of water and then you'll need to add more water. Um, with this, I kind of um, clean my brush off so it's wet, but it's not dripping wet. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. <laughs> Okay, next one. Cindy's also just said that she can't believe how easy you make this look. <laughs> I've painted flowers a few times, <laughs> so I might make it look easy, but it's actually something that you can learn really, really fast. So it's just a bit of practice, muscle memory, and you'll get a hang of it. Now, if you look closely at mine, I have a lot of white space. Don't be afraid of having white space. White, white space makes it look um, more natural. I've got patches there and that's fine as well. Um, as I mentioned before, paint with water, bring it up. Paint with water, bring it up. And then you can use the pigments from the other bits to create subtle highlights. I'm going to use some of this and move it here.
And a lot of it is trusting the process because it might look like how it's looking now, but after about five minutes, when the ink starts to settle with the water, it actually spreads out. And I've learned, I always um, think more is more, but sometimes less is more. Trust the process, let the inks just do its thing. And it starts to, it's a bit like magic, sort of. <laughs> I'm gonna do another one. And I'll show you what I like doing. I like using some colors like the yellow, to break things up a bit, give it a bit of vibrancy. So Danny's also asked, mm -hmm. can you do watercolour pencils if you don't have the watercolour pencils? Oh, pen? absolutely. I love watercolour pencils. Um, my favourite watercolour pencils are the Orbreg Dura watercolour pencils. So it's got the same name as these um, brush pens. What I like to do is I like to press down, um, starting from the inside, and then uh, with the watercolour pencils, you need to put a bit of pressure on your brush to break the pigments, whereas the inks flow a bit more easier. But I absolutely love the pencils. You can actually um, use a paint palette or even I've got a little ceramic plate. I draw on the plate, add a couple of drops of water and it becomes like a paste or like a, a paint. Um, so yeah, the watercolour pencils are amazing. Let me show you here. If you can see, I was painting nothing, um, just with water. And basically with osmosis or diffusion, you can see it's spreading. And that's so therapeutic. I absolutely love watching that. Don't worry about cross-contamination or your colours bleeding into each other. That's part of the beauty of it all. Catherine also asked, um, can you mix the colours together to create different colours? You can. Um, with this pack, you're pretty much spoiled for choice, but absolutely you can uh, mix colours together. You can use a paint palette and mix it there um, before you add it to your, your final piece as well. That's a good question. If you're mixing them together, would you put them uh, very close to each other or would you just bleed them at a distance? I like to bleed because I think it creates, if you have a look at this, can you zoom in by any chance? Yeah, I'm in. Show me a beautiful piece of paper from What's that? Color mixed oh, this one? Yeah. yeah, sure. So I've left, um, I did some colour swatching here and um, I've got all the numbers there. Oops, it's upside down. I've got all the numbers there so that I know that if I picked up a different pencil, I can match um, the colour code. Um, but I love watching it bleed together and it creates an interim, um, a medium colour. And just having a look at these three colours and the colours in between, it's really beautiful. So that's something there. But if you zoom into this flower here, sorry, Matt. <laughs> if you zoom into this flower here, you can actually see the veins coming from, what colour did we have there? That was the 125 mixing in with the 107, you can see the veins. And in real life, if you think of orchids, that's what happens. Like you've got different colors that bleed into each other. And that's what I really love. Okay. I'm gonna do one more just to show you. And I'm gonna use the Aubrey Dura watercolor markers just to give you different um, marker to compare. As you're doing that, I might read out some other questions. You can answer them as you're going. Absolutely. So Cindy said, how do you pick the colours to use? Do they all just work together like that? Um, I wouldn't have thought to mix yellow and look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, I just have a look at um, different colours that are um, similar on the colour chart. And so you'd have the, anal which is called an analogous colour or um, neighbouring colours. It generally gives you a calming effect. So um, if you have a look at these three, they'd be quite close together on a colour wheel. 
And then if I put a yellow into it, it kind of gives it um, a bit of a punch or um, it breaks up the tone a little bit. And I think that um, it makes it less boring if that's um, a bad word to describe it, but um, it breaks it up and makes it more vibrant, more happy. Um, does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then also, I think you're actually doing this as we speak, but yeah. Anne said that she missed the start of the flower. Um, did you wet the paper first or do you start? No, so? I don't wet the paper first. Um, I start with a dry piece of paper. Um, the water um, colour markers are quite um, pigmented and it's because it's water-based, you don't need to um, wet the paper first. I then use a um, clean brush a clean wet brush, I should say. And then I put it straight on the paper and I fan it in a sweeping motion. I'll show you again. Fan it out. And it doesn't exactly, it doesn't have to resemble what you might think a petal looks like. Look at my emotion there. I'm now painting with just water, no pigment. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow from here and I'm going to add it to the part that was wet before. If you find that you've got intense colours there and you want to break it up, don't be afraid to use your paintbrush and help give it a bit of a nudge. Breaking up the pigments. I think I speak for everyone in the chat when I say we could just watch you do this all day, I think. Thank you. I actually love watching um, different artists film their work as well. I love watching it. It's really therapeutic. Um, and then... I go shopping and I buy all the materials to try and do the same thing. <laughs> uh, Luz also said, do you always use four different colours when combining the colours? Can you use three, two? Oh, absolutely not. I, I use, sometimes I use one colour, I use two colours. I don't know why today I've just got four and four. Um, it's just whatever I pick up. I'll show you. Um, I'll do one that's quite different just to show you. So um, Matt's actually said that, uh, can you go over drawing once it dries? Um, so if you've used too much water but you want the vein of the flower to pop more, are you able to fix it by going back over it after it's dry? Yes, you can. So after it's dry, you can add more water. Um, once it's dry, you can't manipulate the colour with water unless you add water on top of the pigments, okay? So um, once – I love to layer my work. And so once it's dry, um, add more colour to it and then add more water to it and then um, keep growing your piece. Really, if I'm doing that, I'd um, use a lighter colour to start with and then add more darker colours on top of that. I'm going to show you, um, just to change things up a little bit, if I'm going to use a purple and then I'll use, I don't know, I'll use a blue. Oops. So it doesn't have to be the colours of a flower that you might typically associate with flowers being pink and orange and yellow. You can still do something really beautiful with other colours as well. Oops. I'm going to move some of this purple along here. So it doesn't have to be the traditional flower colours that come to your mind, um, the pinks and the reds. You can use blue, purple, um, pretty much any colour to do this. All right, so we've had a play with our letters and we've drawn some watercolour flowers. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write the full thing, live life in full bloom, and then we're going to add the flowers around it. We're going to finish the piece off with some foliage, um, and hopefully your work at home is looking similar to what I've got here. 
So before I was using, um, I was doing the calligraphy with smooth uh, photocopy paper. I'm now going to use watercolour paper so that I could add the flowers around it. I'm going to choose to use, let me, I'm spoiled for choice here. I'm going to choose to use the pissed um, jewel marker because I'm not going to add water to my flowers. So this isn't a watercolour brush pen. This is a permanent marker. So um, you can actually use it on a lot of different mediums, which is fantastic. You can use it on acrylic, you can add it to wood, a lot of different things that's not just paper. Okay, so live life in full bloom. I'm gonna do it in the middle here. So you've got your L and remember, I've made my L a little bit curved. I, V, E, big head, little body. And remember every stroke is intentional. We're not flicking anything, we're drawing everything in. Live life. One thing to point out, if you're ever doing watercolour calligraphy, um, I like to make sure I dot my I's and cross my T's as, as I go on. Don't go back and do it later because you might not get the exact same colour again. But in this case, I'm doing it all in green olive green if anyone's interested. Um, live life in, so it doesn't really matter if I dot my T's or cross my eyes now. But out of habit, I just do. Full. Okay, so live life in full bloom. So you're using white paper at the moment, Liz. Yeah. Uh, could you use brown paper? Would that that would probably impact the colour? Yeah, I like the contrast between white and different colours, so I would use white. Um, I haven't actually seen brown watercolour paper. I know that there's black watercolour paper, but I wouldn't think this would um, stand out in again black. Sarah. What are your thoughts? It wouldn't stand out against the black, would it? Not the dye marker, especially. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would say stick with the lighter coloured paper so to have the colours really pop mm. um, in this case. Okay. But, yeah, same. I don't recall seeing brown watercolour paper, and that's the important bit. You really want good yeah. quality watercolour paper. You absolutely do want watercolour paper because if you try to use watercolour markers on regular paper, it will buckle because your water would just sit on the top. Um, it might make your, your paper soggy. It doesn't hold on to the, the um, paper. Sorry, it doesn't hold on to the water um, like our watercolour paper would. Okay, so we're going to paint some flowers. So just while you're painting that one as well, any mm -hmm. tips on how to correct mistakes? apart from starting again. Correct mistakes. Yes. Yeah, so mistakes let's... in your flowers or mistakes in your lettering? Well, I'll let you know shortly. Okay. <laughs> I'll give a funny example. Um, once I was teaching a workshop and there was a, a gentleman there um, wanting to make something for his fiance and he wrote something, he concentrated on the letters so much, did the W, did the E, and instead of wedding, he wrote weeding. You can't correct that, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that you're stuck with. It was in regards to the letters as well. So yeah. <clears throat> I'd say it's not the spelling, but more so just the wrong uh, swish or flick or yeah. movement that you've created. Um, yeah, you might want to start over, <laughs> to be honest. A lot of the times I'm spacing something out and it's not completely centred, then I'd actually want to start over. Um, if you could um, hide a letter with a flower on top of that, you could do that. 
Um, with floral pieces, it's much easier to hide a, an error. You could just draw a different petal on. Um, you can put a leaf somewhere there. You can do much more than you would with um, calligraphy. With writing, it needs to be more precise, especially with spelling. Um, it is hard to disguise something that's incorrect. It's all part of the fun though, right? With practising oh, and starting absolutely. Again. Absolutely. And I love doing this in front of the television where it's actually um, a mindless therapeutic work. So in front of the telly, I might be watching telly and then I'll be writing down the characters. It's all about muscle memory, building up your letters, building up your skill. Um, and yeah, not so much painting in front of the television because of the water. Um, but definitely if I'm doing calligraphy, that can be something you could do on the couch. You don't need an elaborate setup, just um, something, you know, firm or rigid for you to put your paper on and your pen and your set. And as you said before, if you put too much water, um, it's best just to let it dry and then you can go back over that. You can always add more pigment. Absolutely, you could do that. Hope everyone at home is joining in. This is actually very relaxing. I think I'm consciously doing the opposite to what one of the comments said about me using four colours. I'm using two now. <laughs> I am trying to paint as quickly as I can now because I do want to have a little bit of time to show you how it looks when we've added a bit of foliage to it. I forgot to mention that if you wanted to have paper towel handy as well, um, you can blot your brush so that it's not so wet. I probably should have done that earlier because some of this is a bit too wet for my liking. If it is too wet, what you could do is just use a corner of your um, paper towel. It's got a nice sharp corner and just hold it to your your work and you can pick up some of the excess water or ink. I'm actually using the Allbreak Dura watercolour uh, markers here by default. I had planned to use a gold favour, but these are probably my most favourite. I know you're not supposed to have a favourite child, but these are my favourite. Um, and so I pick it up by default. But um, like I showed you before, you could use um, either one. Like they're both watercolour markers. They both work very similarly. And really just trust the process that it does work. Even when you're using just plain water, spread the pigments out. And then after a while, once the pigments settle with the water, it really does look beautiful. I might do one more flower and then I'll add some foliage and we'll... What am I going to do? Sarah, do we have any questions? No, I think everyone's just settled in and practicing. They're all practicing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
I do get a lot of questions from left-handed people asking how to prevent um, an inky hand or smudgy work. And the best way to do it is work away from you. So I'm not left-handed, I'm obviously right-handed. Try not to go over your work. Your paper is flexible. You can move the paper away from your hand. And I'm sure it's much easier said than done. <laughs> I know I said I'd stop there, but it doesn't feel right to stop just yet. How are we going with time, Matt? Yeah, we're going pretty good. That's good. Yeah, at about 4.30 now, but okay, I'll... I'm sure everyone's right into it at the moment. <laughs> so. And I'm enjoying myself, so I keep wanting to do more flowers. I also get asked... How long do you have before you can't apply water? I actually sometimes when I get not so much lazy, but maybe lazy, um, what I tend to do is um, I fill up my page without adding water yet. So I start drawing the helixes or the spirals all around. It also helps me visualise how it all looks um, before I add the water. And with the Albrecht Dura markers, I've got still got plenty of time, so um, I don't feel that, that I have to rush because it's going to dry out anytime soon. We've got a few people saying it's beautiful work. Um, that's so creative and pretty. And please don't stop because it's so therapeutic <laughs> to watch. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Actually, after this... Um, live stream, I believe that the video is going to be posted on Facebook, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you can go back and watch it if that helps as well. I'm rushing it a little bit. Generally, I would take my time, but as I said, I wanted to add some greenery just to show you how to complete the look. Um, okay, look, I'll do one more flower because I feel that I have to um, balance it out a little bit. <laughs> Sharon's just said that she thinks she has one that looks like a flower, so she's pretty excited <laughs> about that. That's great. I'd love to see what people come up with. If you could share your work, that would be so satisfying for me to see. And Lou's also said that um, my kids have been working on the calligraphy and they love it so far. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to add some greenery. I'm going to use this green. This is the May green in the Pit Artist Jewel markers. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got the fine line side on one end and the brush marker. As a calligrapher, I always love the brush marker. Um, there's a time and place for everything, of course. But for this purpose, I'm just going to draw some really simple leaves. I'm not going to colour it all in because even though... The Pit Artist is not technically, or not at all, um, a watercolour marker. You can still put um, water on it and manipulate it before it dries out. And I think I really love it for its subtle touches. Do you find as it dries the colour is um, as vibrant as when you do it or does it um, become a bit more muted? With the Albrecht Dura watercolour markers, I feel like it's just as vibrant. Um, because it's light fast, I just know that the colour's always going to be there. Obviously, if you put too much water on it, it dilutes it. 
then it will be um, less vibrant. But how's that looking? It's looking pretty good. My issue is always when um, the inks are still wet and I'm trying to draw around it and I just hope that I don't smudge my work. But when you add foliage to um, florals, even in a, a real life bouquet as well, when you add the foliage to it, it really completes the look. Before it was just lots of different loose flowers. Now that I've added um, some greenery to it, it really makes it look like a finished piece. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The water here just softens the green. And remember, we're in the middle of the Colour for Life um, competition. So you've got another four weeks. It ends um, end of September. So you've got another four weeks to practice your florals and your calligraphy. I'd love to see some um, submissions with some calligraphy and florals. Um, and I will be looking and it will just make me so proud. We're almost done. And you know what? I really can't leave it there. I'm gonna add one more flower here just so that I have a full piece. Okay, so Nanette has said, I mm -hmm. haven't seen it happen here, and I'm curious. Yeah. You go over the colour to spread and then take more water with the brush. And even though you do combine colours in some moments, how do you keep your brush from having the previous colour shade? Oh, I've been re-dipping it into water. I'm not sure you've noticed. I probably should have put the water on this side, but I keep cleaning my brush. So every time I um, put my brush back down, it's actually a clean brush. So just been cleaning it, adding a bit more water, and then adding the next stroke down. But if it did um, mix colours, I'm not too sad about that either. Okay, I guess that's it. Live life in full bloom. So I hope it doesn't drip, but that's our finished product. And I hope your piece at home looks something similar to this. And I'd love to see what you've done. Sit up in the comments um, and share it with everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. Uh, it will be available um, on the Facebook page, Faber-Castell Australia. Thank you so much.